Okay, it's recording. Who can tell me what this is a picture of? Monkey. Exactly, it's a monkey. Um, do any words come to mind when you think of a monkey? Anything else? Bananas? Sure. <laughs> Maybe silliness, or some people would even think they're uncivilized, possibly. Um, this is a picture of Kanzi, a bonobo chimp. And would you be surprised if I told you that he shared 98.5% of his DNA with humans? Um, while researching um, bonobo chimps, I found that it is not very hard to believe at all. So my goal today is to inform you about the language learning um, that bonobo chimps have. And while uh, reading several research articles and books, I found that um, they focus more on the gestural communication and uh, the ability that bonobos have to learn language. So the natural way bonobos have of communicating with each other is through gestural communication. And it's easier for them than other primates because they're able to walk on two feet, so they have their two hands free to be able to make gestures. And within their different families, they each have their own, like kind of, you know, little language and they come up with like the same gestures, so one family has different gestures than another. But a study done by Heike Leobald and Tomasello um, showed that there were seven bonobo chimps, and they all, all seven of them uh, provided them with gestures of tactile gestures, which were grabbing, slapping, and touching. So it shows that those are the most common gestures within bonobos. And each of those bonobo chimps produced about 11 different gestures. And that you could, you could see similarities between the bonobos that live together with the ones who were separate. Uh, they use gestures to show playfulness, initiate sex, uh, show sympathy, and just show their intentions. Um, Kanzi, a bonobo chimp who's um, in a primate sanctuary, um, he was in the kitchen with the researchers one day, and he decided to randomly throw a can at one of the researchers <laughs> named Kelly, and it ended up hitting her knee, but he didn't see where it hit her, so she obviously grabbed her knee in pain, and he reacted towards it by going over to her and trying to examine her, um, and he ended up seeing an old cut on her hand, so that's where he thought she was hurt. So his way of showing his sympathy was by holding it, and then he tried to clean it with water, and then like, he just held it for her. And his gesture for showing pain in himself is to hold um, where the pain is, like in his arm, he would sit there and hold it. So he's able to come up with his own gestures, but he also learned other gestures from chimpanzees that um, were at the sanctuary as well. There was one chimpanzee, Austin, who his gesture for chasing was to clap. And so Kanzi picked that up, and so each time he wanted to chase was to clap. But it took him about a day to be able to learn how to clap, like he would keep missing his hands. <laughs> so it took about a day for him to learn how to do that. So there's a lot of research about gestural communication, but there's also a lot of communication um, about how bonobos are able to learn language. Um, there is a language barrier, obviously, because we can't speak with bonobos. They're able to produce sounds, but their vocal tract is different than ours, so they can't really form um, all of the consonants we can. So their language, if they were trying to speak with one another, it would be more like vowel sounds, and it's hard for us to pick up on those. Uh, so instead, we communicate um, with bonobos through lexigrams, which are just symbols that represent a word. Um, they're, they have a keyboard in the sanctuary that has like multiple lexigrams on a keyboard, and it just looks like a lot of little hieroglyphics almost um, on the keyboard. So Kanzi is known for his use of lexigrams. Um, he was able to learn the way a human child would learn. His mother was taught the lexigrams, and he would sit on, on those lessons and those tests um, so he could hear what was going on. But Matata, his mother, really wasn't able to um, comprehend it as well as he could. And the researchers finally learned that he was able to produce um, these words when Matata left for a little while. And then he sat down and he was able to point to the lexigram after somebody repeated a word. Uh, Kanzi's 
Because he's able to understand full sentences as well. I watched a video of one of the researchers um, giving him commands, and one of them, she asked him, she said, Kanzi, can you pick up the TV and take it outdoors? And he was able to do it just like that. Um, there are about 400 lexigrams on the keyboard today, and Kanzi knows at least 350 of those lexigrams. Um, there's also a study done by Sue Savage Rambo about um, between a bonobo chimp and a chimpanzee. There is a difference between bonobos and chimpanzees. They're completely two different apes. And the study showed that the bonobo chimp was able to learn 50 lexigrams by the time she was 22 months, but the chimpanzee learned 50 words in 34 months. So chimpanzees are still intelligent, but it shows that bonobos have uh, more of advanced capability of learning language. So research is still continuing on about the language and there's still so much to learn. Um, Kanzi's still learning a lot. He's learning how to make um, tools with stones. And they wonder what will happen with his son Tico because uh, he's around researchers so he's learning language, but he can also learn it from um, Kanzi and the chimpanzees. So I hope it's easier for you to grasp that uh, they have 98.5% of the DNA that we do. And I hope you think about it next time somebody says, it's so easy, a monkey can <laughs>